as well, offering their uh, parish centers and such. But uh, I know we reached out to Rescue Mission and CAM and have posted that, that there will be cooling centers available for those um, that need to get out of the heat uh, yeah. these next three days. Yeah, it's warm. We were at a wedding on Saturday, mm -hmm. and it was outside. Ooh. And um, ironically enough, it was friends of ours from the gym that we go to. Uh -huh. And they're actually our neighbors, too. Um, but... I was making the joke. I sweat more at their wedding than I have you did during CrossFit. like an actual workout um, with them at the gym we go to. So see, there it you was go. hot. It was a workout. Oh, Bill is saying there's no sound. Hello. Okay, there is sound now. Out. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so it was it was hot. It was down in Zionsville, mm -hmm. and thankfully the the reception was inside, but the actual okay. like wedding ceremony was outside, and whew, it was warm. Um, <laughs> I was in Tennessee most of last week on great. like a little business trip, and it was warmer here than it was in Tennessee. It was. I was going to say, I snuck away as well. The Indiana Conference of Mayors had our annual uh, conference uh, down in Madison, Indiana. So it was down on the Ohio River, and, and it was very pleasant as well. Nice. Love it. All right. So, well, this show is partnered with Robert Miller and Son Furniture. Yes. So let's give them a quick shout out as we get in today's show. But get ready to embrace, as we were saying, the summer heat with the sizzling summer savings event at Robert Miller and Son Furniture in Kokomo. Take advantage of up to 30% off. Select furniture pieces with Tempur-Pedic floor models up to 50% off. Lazy Boy recliners are starting at just $3.99 and as well as a huge selection of American made lift chairs but what really sets them apart is their lowest price guarantee guarantee so you can shop with confidence come in store and see what the next addition to your home is don't miss out on these sizzling deals robert miller and son furniture here in kokomo thanks for being the show partner Thank so you. uh how was your weekend uh not too bad a little busy i got talked into having a garage sale <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So the, now moving all the kids out and some of their stuff was collected into the garage and yeah. uh, knowing that uh, before long, my wife would like to park in the garage. So okay. uh, she said, why don't we? I said, sure. And then the Thursday before she said, oh, by the way, I got scheduled to work Saturday. So it was all you. She was the smart one of the two. Right. I, I walked right into it. So you yeah. could have been like, yeah, me too. Uh, I know. Yeah. yeah but. <laughs> So yeah, so I had uh, that fun Saturday, uh, and then just knocked out some uh, honeydew items uh, the rest of the time as well nice. yesterday. Nice. And, uh, yep. Very cool. So, yep. Very nice. Yeah, we had a, like that wedding and then pretty much just relaxed on Sunday. It was nice. Perfect. What's going on at City Hall this week? Uh, what's going on? Well, uh, here in a few hours, uh, the uh, most recent uh, City Council meeting. Uh, is this evening at six o'clock and um, we will be honoring uh, Joe Martino, Joe Martino, John Martino and the uh, number of volunteers that have uh, made the Moose Carden Fishing Kids Fishing Clinic a huge success for the last 40 years. This unfortunately uh, was is being listed as their uh, was their last and, and final year uh, for the clinic after, again, doing it for 40 years. Uh, not sure if somebody will be able to pick up the baton and, and run with it uh, later on, but right now uh, it is a fine. So uh, the council and I are uh, issuing a joint resolution uh, commending Mr. Martino and the hundreds of volunteers through the years uh, for making that clinic, that fishing clinic, just an incredible, incredible opportunity uh, for kids of all ages and the memories that it created. So um, doing that tonight and then racing down to uh, Foster Park because they got the uh, Night of Hope uh, um, where they celebrate mm -hmm. those that have uh, um, overcome addiction and also uh, honor and uh, potentially get, keep in mind those that uh, have either lost their battle or are still struggling. So uh, that should be nice. It'll be a little warm, but it's always a, a great uh, event for uh, those individuals and their families and friends that continue to um, celebrate and support them. So nice. I'll be here in a little bit. Very cool. Love it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about touch a truck event coming up. Hey, that's right. So in a couple of weeks, September 8th, it's this Sunday, uh, Sunday again over at uh, Inventrek technology park. So they're on home and Furman and um, there's not just uh, city vehicles and fire and police, but also sheriff's department. But we've got some uh, farm implements uh, coming, some tractors and such. And uh, as I understand it, the uh, state police has got, gotten on board as well, and they'll be bringing their helicopter at some point nice. in the afternoon. 
uh, but that it runs from 11 to 3, I think, 11 to 3. Um, but that first hour, I think, as I mentioned last year, we've done it the last few years, is a uh, sensory specific uh, hour, 11 to noon, where uh, they may do some of the lights, but no horns, no sirens, and sirens sure. uh, for uh, those individuals, especially kids that uh, um, have sensory issues. Uh, so, really happy to, to do that. Um, I think there's going to be a food truck or two as well, because that was one of the comments we've always heard. And I know Hydration Station um, was there in the event truck park, but mm -hmm. they've unfortunately uh, moved out uh, oh, of I didn't that. Know that. Yep, oh. it was just recently. I was there this morning and saw the sign. I was like, ah, shoot. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so there'll be a few uh, organizations providing some uh, uh, food and beverages there for sale uh, as part of the event. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that September. And then the day before that is the whole 9-11 um, uh, Memorial Climb and uh, event that uh, the Kokomo firefighters have put on yep. the last handful of years. Uh, and this year, it keeps getting a little bigger. Uh, it's not just the Memorial Stair Climb. Uh, they're at the stadium, but uh, they'll do a 5K run. And then a, what, I, I forget, it's not the... Murph or Morph. Yeah, it's just a, a the or something. Hero Wad is what okay, it's called. Hero so Wad. Wad is yeah. workout of the day. Work, and um, they have Hero Wads where it's it's CrossFit Kokomo that yep. puts it on. And it's specific to the hero. So I'm pretty yep. sure you do it's nine a, movements, it, 11 reps of 11 nine movements of or nine something movements. like yep. that. And they have a buy-in. So you have to like, uh, it's like a 2,500 meter run possibly or I forget what it is. Yeah, there's, they've got the, the professional firefighters, the local 396 uh, has it on their yep. Facebook page for the, the link to, to sign up because they want folks to register for one or all three of the events uh, that morning. Uh, they'll have activities there for families and such. And then Mike Milligan and Steam Shovel, uh, they were originally scheduled to perform later on that uh, early evening uh, in the stadium, but they've moved that concert over to the Riverwalk uh, to uh, make it a little more... Uh, cozy and intimate there as well as allow folks to get uh, from the river walk over to uh, foster park because immediately after mm. milligan and steam shovels done uh, then uncle cracker will be performing down in uh, foster park gotcha tonight. so great busy weekend yeah and up. the reason um i know you guys probably hearing about this 9-11 event and everything just sounds like exercise and it's overwhelming um but the whole point of a hero wad or even the the other extras like the 5k or the, the stair climb um the whole goal of that is to get you in the mindset of like you're gonna have to do this really hard thing right so like climb the amount of stairs that the firemen had to climb or run a 5k or do this intense crossfit workout but at least after you get done with that you get to go home you get to go home to your family, you get to go home to your loved ones. And you know, whatever that really hard thing is, you choose to do that with that, that day, which some people are going to probably do all, all of them. Three, right. Um, that's still nothing compared to what those firefighters and the emergency services had to do on that day yep. in New York city. So it's this, Absolutely. it's this reminder. It's not just like a, I don't know, let's oh, do let's a 5k go, right, and go right? work out. Yeah. yeah. Like the goal is to like really get you in your mind of, you're going to have to do something that's really physically difficult, but yep, nothing cool. compared to what they went through as well as you get to go home afterwards, right? You yep. get to see your loved ones. So it's, it's a really cool. special and unique way to honor those who gave it all yep. on the, that awful day, which ironically enough is my birthday. Um, but you know, th that that's the purpose yep. of that. So Love it's, it. it's a special yep. thing. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the questions today that we had pre-show, which, um, we'll see if we can get any on the live. Um, all rely around uh, like the roads and things sure. like that. So, yeah. and and I get it. You know, yeah, we especially as we, I mean, I can't believe we're already almost through it's August. Crazy. But as we get close to uh, the fall and when winter months, I mean, time is is precious because I mean, as we've talked before, um, due to the uncertainty of weather, the the asphalt plant that supplies a lot mm -hmm. of the material that we need for our streets shuts down uh, around November. And so to be able to get as much done as we can, not just the street department, but uh, some of the larger jobs that are being contracted out uh, with E&B paving, um, you know, we start scrambling. And of course, you know, if, when it's nice and people are out and about and uh, notice the conditions of the streets, uh, it makes sense. I mean, there's, there's so many that we'd love to get to. There's so many that we still need to. Some that have been, you know, it's, push down the the list just as uh, others get beat up and such but uh, 
I know that um, right now we're in the middle of uh, reconstructing Hoffer Street that's been on the books for three, uh, well, four years. Right? It started design work before I even became mm. mayor. Um, and so that just shows some how sometimes those projects, because of the size and scope uh, that and the need for additional contracting work, but then, you know, federal and state funding comes into sure. play. So, yeah. but yeah, well, I'm sure they might've listed some specific that we need. Yeah. To there's to. one specifically about, um, Indian Heights too, which we've just got some follow-ups on that whole topic. But, uh, this question is from Avery on Facebook and are there any future plans to add more street lights in Indian Heights? Also, will there be rep repaving done on Arrowhead, which is obviously a street name um, in the neighborhood? It took a lot of damage when 931 right. was closed to through traffic, so cars from both directions had to use Arrowhead to go south and north on 931. It would make things a lot easier to have it repaved and also have some more street lights around. Avery on Facebook. You bet. And we've talked about uh, the street lights, uh, I think, in past shows, and I know... We had to, and we're working with Duke because Duke Energy supplies the uh, lights for practically, I think, 99.5% of mm. all the street lights uh, in the city of Kokomo. There's a few uh, in areas that uh, are actually under the streets, maintenance and such. But uh, working with Duke Energy um, and split the Indian Heights area into two phases, got the first phase done, but are still working through the second one. And again, as we've talked about before, same way with sidewalks and everything. Duke has identified where uh, strategically those lights need to go, but in order to put a light pole there, got to get permission, got to get you know a, an easement granted by the property owner in order to put that light pole there. And so we've, I think they've got <clears throat> probably 80, 85% uh, of the light poles, uh, the easements uh, permitted, uh, but there's you know that handful of, of others that, that still need to do. And if we can't, or if they are unsuccessful in, in getting those, then they got to reconfigure and, and redraw and, and hope that. So, I mean, there is a plan in place. It's slow rolling, again, just because we need permission to put the light poles in people's uh, properties. Uh, and some most uh, uh, welcome it, and others are like, no, nah, I don't want that there, or the possibility of you coming through, you know, running a, a line to power it uh, mm -hmm. through the property. So um, that's where that is. And then as for the paving, kind of the same way. I mean, I know we're kind of piecemealing it in through Indian Heights as we piecemeal throughout the, the city. Arrowhead was definitely one that got a lot more uh, traffic. I think a section of it uh, did get repaved, but there's uh, others, um, other, other sections of Arrowhead that uh, could use some love. But there's so many other streets within Indian Heights that, Again, looking at priorities and kind of spreading the love throughout uh, different areas of the city. Um, we'll get to them you know, as we can. Because I know some of that too, and we've had uh, questions in the past on some of the standing water there uh, during heavier rain mm. events as well. So that's all part of the plan as well. If we need to do work in a particular area, do we get with wastewater to see if they're available to address some of the drainage as well? Gotcha. So, so Indian Heights in general, has that always been a part of... The city or when was that it was uh i'm trying to think it was annexed i'm trying to think uh i'm trying to think when it was it, it might have been in the officially in the 90s like late 90s and such it hasn't been in the city limits for for very long and was brought in but it was uh developed well, that was over 30 years times. ago <clears throat> yeah. It's depressing in reality. Right. That is I know, the 90s or right? 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So, but so yeah, Indian Heights originally was not um, developed uh, and within the city limits. It was later annexed. I mean, fortunately, I think part of that development, they ran uh, the sanitation sewer and connected them on. And, and I don't know if that was part of the uh, agreement, too, that they mm -hmm. thought, okay, they'll run them out there uh, if within five years you know, they voluntarily agree to be annexed into the into the city, which is kind of some of the um, uh, initiatives as well, that if there's a development in uh, certain places, because I know um, when I was still commissioner, uh, we were working with the city because the Darrell Chapel area, mm -hmm. and, and it was the around 2012 when uh, when the city annexed areas to the to the east and, and the west, um, <clears throat> but had gone out to the bypass, but still left Darrell Chapel as a whole right, so where it was, championship park is now yeah yeah and uh and because uh there were failing septic systems and such there we worked with the city to run an interceptor for everybody to hook onto. and part of 
getting them hooked on was that within five years they would agree to then uh, eventually get annexed into the city. And so that Daryl Chapel neighborhoods, one on mm-hmm. the north side of Markland, one on the south side of Markland, um, I think the north side is eventually got annexed in or came into the city, but I think the south side uh, whole of, Do- of, of that Daryl Chapel still is not within the city limits. So you're saying they and this is like mere curiosity, but off of this question, just the process of an annexation, like you said, uh, Indian Heights volunteered. Mm -hmm. Did Indian Heights have like a board and that's who communicates or is there a vote that takes, or, you know, how does an annexation happen if they're a part of the County or even their own little district? Like what's the process? Yeah. So sometimes, uh, like in the cases that we're experiencing now, as we annex areas uh, up to the northeast with the battery plant, those are voluntary. So the property owners say, yes, we went into the city. And so they, you know, file the necessary paperwork and agree yeah. to it. And then there's just it's a cordial. You're in a neighborhood with <clears throat> multiple yeah. property owners. But if you're in the, in the neighborhood and that's the, that's kind of how the Daryl chapel, I mean, you're like, Hey, that's great. And, and if a certain percentage of, <clears throat> of individuals there voluntarily or sign on to it, then they can, they can come in. Which is why I think the north side uh, s- section uh, is now in the city limits, and the south side still is not because the percentage, the large percentage of those, did not want in. Um, <clears throat> but other areas, like what happened in 2012, is just a city looking at expanding, and they start filing the paperwork, and then at that point, I think they then uh, get folks uh, to sign on or. Uh, can file suit because I know there were uh, a couple cases against the city back then uh, where uh, individuals in those areas uh, did not want to be annexed in and, and filed suit but didn't get enough uh, <clears throat> support in order to um, stop that annexation. So there's both voluntary and involuntary. And so I know there's there's been legislation proposed year after year about um, adding more stri- restrictions even to voluntary annexation to allow mm. the counties to weigh in and, and such yeah. and so um well just like it's not this but the only thing compared to is like a country taking over another, another country, country you know what i mean right. but like without the war like right. it's just like yeah. yeah you can have it yeah you know what i mean it's just it's an interesting thought and like obviously the benefits to a city would be expansion through land but then also property tax money and tax and increase revenue, in population get increase you in population you know, get you qualified for different grant programs based on population or the size of the city and then the benefit for what's being annexed would be the utilities mm-hmm. the city would provide right and i know sometimes and we've had questions about this like certain people were promised certain things with right. the annexation that they're paying taxes for now they pay for blah 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 mm-hmm. and they takes a while for that to happen or those utilities or those benefits to like come help those homes. Yeah. So the, so the utilities, I mean, and that's been a, an area of contention as well is that, you know, many areas that were annexed back in 2012 still don't have sanitation uh, to them or even water and Indian American water is the supplier of that. And so, I mean, that would be, you know, us working with them to continue to, uh, to work out if that fits into their plan, but then also you know, sanitation with the cost involved. Um, with that, there are still areas that um, you know are still, and some of that is by choice, and some of it's by you know not. Um, so yeah, so there's still that's the uh, unfortunate thing is that there's the you know, by being annexed, you have the opportunity to provide those. It's just not you're not required to. Uh, gotcha. But to to provide certainly now what you're paying for, you know, trash, law enforcement, fire protection, you know, and that, I mean, those services, you know, are you know, in street maintenance and such. I mean, so those that are statutorily covered under uh, the uh, property tax law for that mm-hmm. it is, I mean, it's just the water and sanitation, you know, would not. So sure. those individuals, you know, are not paying a sanitation bill, so to speak, based on water usage, but they are paying a small portion of uh, storm water fee, which is basically covers the water quality in mm-hmm. either a city or a county. And so they're, they're paying for what hits and runs into our waterways. Gotcha. 
Is there any areas right now that the city could potentially, you know, keep that growth going and look into annexation as well? There could. I mean, I, I know right now to the east where we've stopped um, uh, there at the at the bypass, the previous administration stopped at the bypass. Uh, there's some areas on the west side that, you know, kind of mixed emotions. You see hear some that are saying, hey, we'd love to get um, brought into the city and, and other parts or yeah. others in that in certain neighborhoods. And so there's the possibility of, uh, of going west past Malfalfa or 300. I mean, we don't have any plans on it. So we're not, <laughs> not to say that there's anything in the works because right now a lot of it's just to the northeast with, um, with all the uh, development in and around the battery plant. Gotcha. So. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Melissa on Facebook, and once again, road-related. Uh, fix North Washington Street, she said. I would love to fix North Washington Street. So uh, because of the size and scope of that with it being four lanes, I don't think that we'd uh, agree to narrow it like Washington was uh, south of Jefferson, keep Jefferson or from Washington from Jefferson north uh, four lanes. And so because of the size and scope, it's kind of the same that we're dealing with, uh, Hoffer street now, and hopefully La Fountain street, uh, next, uh, and such is just something that that would be, um, what a project that we would have to, uh, apply for community crossing uh, grant funds, uh, to help, uh, support because again, that's something that we'd have to contract out and, you know, really give, uh, some major love too, especially with that stretch. Even even if we were taking it from Jefferson to North Street, I mean, it'd be it's uh, a bit yeah. Bit, but I mean, I'd love to take it, you know, all the way up if if and when we do and and are able to get uh, awarded the funds, uh, take it all the way up to Morgan Street. But I know we're, I think, in the plans now uh, for applying those uh, for La Fountain Street from right there about where Washington La Fountain hit. You know, rural king um, uh, down to uh, 931 in front of Lowe's. So obviously it's amazing if we're able to get grants for road mm -hmm. work and things like that, but how much money is actually budgeted into the city's budget to without grants to do projects like this? Yeah, so and we, we're in the process of going through um, budget, budgets now, and I know some of that comes from road and uh, street funds too, but I mean, just what we would do ourselves uh, I have to check. I mean, is it more it's, budgeted than it is hopefully in grants for just the simple repaving sure than yeah. anything that needs something more I mean it's budget you know, we have budgeted in funds that can be used for matching grants mm. so the matching funds because it's like a you know an 80 20 or sure. it's, they will fund 80 if we have 20 percent of uh, matching some of it comes from our municipal planning organization or the MPO which is a city county joint board uh, that assists in uh, street and uh, walkway projects uh, as well that we go through a series of um, projects uh, or collectively uh, as a group. And I know one that's coming out of that group is the Berkeley Road, um, both Berkeley and Goyer Road. So uh, both of those here in the next couple of years, uh, as those come uh, together, uh, will be funded through that partnership or that organization. Gotcha. So then what you're saying is more money is for roads is in our budget rather than like what we get for grants or yeah. is it the other way around? What we get from grants is more than what we're able to budget because just because of the size and scope of, of what we can certain projects needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, Carl, I see your question on live chat. Carl on live chat says, think Kokomo can trim down that weed slash grass at park Avenue and Washington street. Hard to see cars coming when turning west onto park. Yeah, and I know they trimmed the uh, first little section um, <clears throat> there because it's been, uh, I've been brought up in, in an issue before. And so I've already you know, kind of talked to our park superintendent as well to see if we can do some additional planting because I know that native grass gets pretty high and, and it's and they've got the first two little bunches uh, they're near Park Avenue, trimmed down so uh, they can see the oncoming traffic uh, before turning left. Um, but uh, but yeah, since it's been an ongoing issue and because again, that native grass is uh, high at the north end of that median, uh, they're across the bridge that uh, we'll look for new plantings to try and correct that. Sure. And it is becoming that time of year too. And it always scares me. We have some friends that live 
way out in the country, like closer to like Rusheville than Kokomo. And we were out their house not too long ago. And it's getting to that time of year where some of those country road turns are scary. Corn, yeah. And because corn is getting tall. And I've seen, I've noticed uh, some of those corners, they're like cutting the stalks um, probably a good like 10 foot back, like in half mm-hmm. so to give more visibility. Yep. But like uh, it happens every year. I feel like yeah. there's some sort of really bad car wreck out in the country where someone didn't see a car coming because the corn's so high on yep. those corners. Um, so careful out there. Careful out with there. Those. I know yeah. that's more of a county thing than a city thing. Um, but yeah, that happens every year. Mm-hmm. So the, let's talk about the asphalt plant. I know it's it's hard to say because it really is weather dependent, which mm-hmm. it is crazy to me that we can't, we, I don't know, but it's not we, it's like the company um, can't have something interior to make that year round, right. but even that'd be hard to transplant and, and do the work with the asphalt. And but. there, I mean, there is, they, so there's ways for them to basically turn up the heat on the machinery. I mean, so, but because of the energy that it expends in order to keep that machinery, you know, hot enough to keep the asphalt manufactured. I mean, it, it so adds, much, yeah. Yeah. So much thousands and thousands of dollars to a particular project. If you do it, on into December, which again, and even if they keep the, the asphalt plant open, sometimes we can get a little batch here and there, but more times than yeah. not, if they're keeping it open, then being paid uh, extra to do so, it's usually for a company that's you know, maybe doing you know, sure. work out near the yeah. battery plant or when does that usually slow down or stop? What time of year does the asphalt plant? Usually November. It's November, November. Yeah. Just okay. not knowing the uncertainty of weather gets weather weird. and freezes and such. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could snow next week. It's Indiana. You just never know. <laughs> um, so let's talk about this year in road. I mean, so we had construction season, right? There's five seasons mm-hmm. in five Indiana, seasons. spring, fall, summer, and uh, winter yeah. and construction. construction. Um, We're still in construction season. Yeah. Are we on track for what you wanted to accomplish with roads this year? Are we, have we set back a little bit? Are we on schedule or we're, we're set back a little bit? There was a lot that we had planned and, and, and wanted to still knock out. Um, I think lastly, last week I was asked uh, if we were still going to be able to do uh, North street because we've got it contracted out uh, from Ohio out to nine thirty one. that stretch. And that needed reconstructed because there's some under decking. And then we were going to go ahead and do North street from Phillips all the way out. I mean, it sounds like the, the additional time that, roads took out and around the battery plant before they could get over to Hoffer street, just going to push, uh, that back. Cause I also wanted, um, the intersection of Jefferson and Washington opened up. Mm. And so those two, the North street, that entire stretch, as well as Jefferson and, and Washington. Um, I mean, it looks like again, timing wise of some of the other projects and with E and B really being the only company uh, locally that bids for a lot of these, you know, even though we send bid packets out to, you know, a handful of um, companies um, just with their workload and such, it, it looks like we may not get North Street and the Jefferson and Washington intersection uh, addressed until next spring. And the main reason for that is man hours or? Man hours, weather. Um, you know, it's like sometimes, you know, when they get in, I know uh, with one particular, um, as they got going and, you know, dig up to, to reconstruct the street, they find, you know, a, a sewer line or a gas mm-hmm. line that, you know, that may not be in the area or a, along uh, a particular street or something uh, in a position or in a placement that, you know, the original maps showed. And so then sure. they've got to step back, work with the utility company so they can get that uh, addressed. And so there were a couple issues like that that kind of put uh, things behind um with that, some, unfortunately. Some unknowns. Yeah. I mean, it's like anything construction, yeah. add a little extra time compared to how much you think it's going to take. Yeah. Right. Cause there's yeah. always, I don't know, definitely learn that when we built our new yeah. office, there's stuff that yeah. pops up that you don't expect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially so. with, you know, feet and feet underground. Yeah. You don't know what's under there. Right. Yeah. yeah. I always do find it. It's cool when they strip and they completely repave. It's like, we're it's like fossils of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. little cobblestones start poking up right. from what the roads used to be like. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's crazy to see that. Like, but the street department itself, I mean, hopefully we're going to be able to still knock out some streets and alleyways uh, before uh, the end of the season as well. That'll, again, depend on, on weather, but because a lot of that we're doing ourselves, and as long as the milling machine doesn't go down again, we had that occur uh, about a month and a half or so ago, and so had to 
pause on that yeah. until the parts got in for the for the milling machine to get back up and so it's the big honking thing that pulls oh, the yeah. grinds it up and pulls the old stuff up so we can lay the new stuff down and so it's like a transformer to me yeah i always uh-huh. feel like you know optimus prime's gonna show up <laughs> and be like i got this maybe that's an idea great. we could look into hiring the transformers for the street department I they'd probably get it that. done quickly i bet you're right i don't know if there's any like robot wars going on right now so i don't know what they're up to, to. check Probably got some open availability. Maybe. I don't know how much they charge. We'll Taxes might go up. Uh, but those are the questions we had. A lot of roads uh, questions today as we, you know, round up summer, as depressing as that might sound. But I don't know. College football kind of starts this weekend. Nice. So I'm really excited nice. about that. i um, starting to feel fallish. Fallish. Looking forward to it, even though it's 94 degrees tomorrow. I know. What it's in the But end. those temperatures last week kind of got you in the mood. For I wasn't here. I was in Tennessee. I missed yeah. all of them. Which we were talking in the office. It's like fake fall is yeah. what that is. Like which that happens every year. Like a fake fall and then we get slammed again with heat. That's what happens. Indiana. Love it. Love it. Awesome. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat below. We'll get those for next week's episode. Mr. Mayor, do you have a dad joke for us today? Uh, well, you mentioned we're in football season. We are. Right? Yeah. And so, I mean, those poor receivers, I mean, you realize what's harder for them to catch the faster they were. You think if they're able to run fast and outrun the defense, I mean, it's harder for them to catch – this the faster they run yeah i can see that yeah their breath yeah that makes sense because i mean you're out of breath they're in pretty good shape though it is kind of wild these these athletes they'd be running around like crazy and not even breaking a sweat which if i were in the stands alone i'd be sweating probably Mm -hmm. so but not as much as you did as last saturday's wedding facts that was some some hot it was a hot wedding. Hot wedding. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the chat below. We'll get them for next week's uh, episode. And uh, have a great rest of your day, Kokomo. We'll see you next time. See you, Kokomo.